Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner, and welcome back to Mr. Lehner's Math Extravaganza. No, don't adjust your sets again. Yes, it's the same tie. Yes, it's the same shirt. But no, it's not a different day. It's our third video of the day. And you kind of go a little stir crazy when doing a video like this uh, three times in a row. So I brought myself a little friend to keep me sane. <laughs> so he's going to help me out as we go through some of these problems on here. Now, I know what you're thinking, and you see behind me, you're like, really, Mr. Lehner? Seriously? Common multiples and common factors again? Yeah, and guess what? There's actually more situations you can actually use common multiples and common factors. So, we're going to take a look at these different situations, and again, this will kind of prove, do you really understand how to use common multiples and common factors? Are there going to be other situations that you might want to use them? Well, yes, you can. Uh, all right, well, let's take a look. Well, with your permission, can we go take a look at some of these questions? Okay, that's kind of his way of saying yeah. So, let's take a look at yet another example using common multiples and common factors. Marissa's dad donates 120 cans of juice and 90 packages of uh, crackers for a class party. Each student must get the same amount with no leftovers. So again, we want to make sure that it's fair for everybody. What is the greatest number of students that can come to the class party? and share the food equally. How much juice and crackers will each student get be able to explain? I love that word, explain. It makes you kind of talk about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So let's think about it again. What can I use? Common kind of multiples, common kind of factors. What can I do to figure out how this class party, uh, how we're going to divide up these crackers and um, juice? So I'm going to use common factors. Again, one of the key words in here, uh, and I'm looking for the greatest number of students that can come. Think about like greatest number, what does that mean? Well, greatest common factor. If I have 120 juices and 90 crackers, if I find the greatest common factor, that's gonna be the greatest number that they, or factor that they have in common, that's going to work out evenly. Uh, so, I listed all the factors of 120, I listed all the factors of 90, and then I, you might circle or highlight, but I made them red, all the ones they had in common. The greatest number of students that can share the snacks equally would be 30 students because that's the GCF. 30 is the GCF of both of those numbers. I know this because 30 times 4 gives me 120 and 30 times 3 gives me 90. One of the things I know you will hear me say throughout the year is when you show me this math, be able to explain what these numbers mean. Well, what does 30 times 4 mean? 30 what? 4 what? 120 what? We want to put our units on there to make sure that we are uh, being specific in what we're talking about. So I know that each student would get four juices and three packages of crackers because 30 students times four juices would give me 120 uh, total juices. So again, I'm explaining to you that what each of these numbers stands for. And I know that each student, because if there's 30 students and each of them gets three crackers or three packages of crackers, 30 students times three packages of crackers equals 90 crackers. So again, I used our GCF, our greatest common factor, to figure out how to split this up, and I explained my thinking. I explained why this makes sense and why this works. Uh, do you agree over here? Do you think we did a good job on this one? I know he's kind of shaking no, but his little giggle means yes. So hopefully <coughs> you're able to realize when looking at these problems, the greatest common factor will definitely be helpful um, when doing this. Again, you might be having a birthday party or you might bring in snacks for a class, you might have to figure out, well, how can I divide up my two snacks evenly so that all the students get a fair amount? All right, let's take a look. You already know it's coming. Your favorite part, the one that you're gonna do at home. Well, Marissa gets hungry on the way to school and decides to eat two packages of crackers. Oops, she got a little hungry. There is now 120 cans of juice and 88 packages of crackers. How many students can share it equally, and how do you know? So I threw another like wrench at you, a little, not a real wrench, but like a curveball, a little wrench in the plans here. Now you have to figure out, well, she ate two of the packages, there's only 88 left. How can I still share this equally? I know you're ready to go already because you're probably exhausted of seeing a lot of these problems, but pause the video, we'll see what you come up with. Do you think they're gonna be able to figure it out? Maybe. Yeah, I think they'll be able to do it. Oh, we're back on. Oh, all right, sorry, I'm having a little side conversation over here. Uh, we think you're gonna be able to figure this out at home, but let's see, I have my way, you may have done it differently, but let's see if we came up with the same thing. All right, so we're gonna list the factors of 120 and 88, 
Oh, good, you did that. And I'm gonna highlight or circle or make a mark for all the ones that are in common. And the greatest common factor of 120 and 88 is eight, that's my GCF. So the greatest number of students that can share the snacks equally would be eight students. I know it's because eight times 15 equals 120 and eight times 11 equals 88. Therefore, each student would get 15 juices and 11 packages of crackers. Sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? That's a lot of juice. That's a lot of crackers in there, but maybe if you eat a lot of crackers, you'd get thirsty and you have to drink a lot. I don't know. Maybe Marissa's just really generous. So when looking at, at our number sentences here, again, if there's eight students, eight students times 15 juices gives me 120 juices. Eight students times 11 crackers gives me 88 crackers. So again, just make sure when you're writing your number sentences, we're labeling what these numbers mean. Because if you turn it in and I look at this and I see like eight times 11 equals 88, I'm gonna ask you, well, what do you mean? Tell me more. I don't know what these numbers mean. So you have to be very specific when talking about our number sentences. Hopefully you were able to see a couple different examples again of how common multiples and common factors work. And I know by now, after watching three of these and seeing the same type of questions, only a little bit different, I'm sure you are now the experts on common multiples and common factors. And I know you're gonna use them in your everyday, everyday life situations. So thank you for tuning in to Miss Language Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.